Gordon, we're here at the European Business Summit. This morning, a uh, report was published based on a survey with more than 250 CEOs. They said that energy efficiency was the least priority, the lowest priority for European CEOs. Uh, Intel has a, a special announcement, a special strategy on energy efficiency. How do you see that lack of interest uh, with uh, other companies? Well, it, it's, it surprises me in some ways, because if you think about energy, energy is both a cost and then there is, a, there is an ethical part of this, which is our effect on our planet. What we are seeing is there's huge interest in energy in the IT community. So if I look at data centers, we've seen a massive change, so probably a 90% reduction in energy per unit of work in the last four years. And that's something that's been driven by the user, by the companies, so the people who work for these CEOs clearly do care about energy. I think the, the broader issue, though, is energy needs to be something that is understood. And I think one of the problems is it's quite complex when you think of the energy generated, the cost of cooling it, the, the substitutive aspect of this. You know, a simple example, um, right now energy and data centers are about two and a half percent of the world's electricity consumption. Right? That in itself is a significant amount and as I say we've reduced it dramatically. But more importantly that same ICT industry impact on the rest of the world is enormous. Our ability to save energy by eliminating travel, by moving energy to a smart grid. You know, there was an interesting deployment in the United States in Boulder, Colorado, where they proved that by putting in smart grid technologies, they could save three to five percent on the actual distribution of energy. Now, the cost of doing that in other ways, in terms of hitting our carbon commitments, would be absolutely astronomical. So I think ICT, if you look at the ability to video conference, um, yesterday I spoke to 600 people across Intel from about 65, 70 countries, right? The total cost of doing that was a little bit of time in a studio. It wasn't traveling, I didn't get, you know, I didn't have uh, jet lag. The people I was able to talk to, you know, got a lot more out of it. And that's ICT working to reduce energy. So, so that saves energy as well. Would it be fair to say that, that Intel's interest in energy efficiency is largely based also on, on lowering the power consumption of the microchips that you produce? Well, it's one area where we've had significant reductions. Just, just as an example, since our core processor came out, the difference between what we were, what energy was being used, and today is 20, tera, uh, 10, 20 terawatts, which is the equivalent of over a million homes worth of energy. So it's just, you know, as an example, you know, we're already doing absolutely astounding things to reduce the energy consumption on computing. But even if we got that to zero, that's a small thing compared to the effect we can have on the industry by making your home more efficient, by making industry more efficient, by changing the way the transportation system works to be more efficient. You know, energy, you know the ICT has a much, much bigger impact on energy than just the consumption of it itself. So you're basically saying that European CEOs who don't consider energy efficiency as a priority are wrong. They really should consider it. It could be uh, uh, saving them money as well, but also making them more environmentally friendly. Their CFOs care about it, the chief financial officers, because this is real cost. And the beautiful thing about energy efficiency is it doesn't cost you money. I mean, done correctly, it has a massive impact on the actual cost of running your business. And I think that's where we're seeing a real recognition within the IT departments and increasingly in the larger area. It does dis dis disturb me that you still hear CEOs saying they don't care. And I think it's really they don't understand the actual cost-benefit analysis. Very generally, the theme of the summit is putting Europe back on track. Uh, how does Intel feel about the state of the European economy? Well, I think we have the same uh, concerns about the broader macroeconomic issues than anyone. But I, I would say, you know, historically, Europe has been the center for the world for design. Whether it's clothing, food, furniture, cars, cell phones, you know, the European environment has produced the iconic designs of the last century. And we still see an enormous potential here. But what it takes to be successful is something that I'd refer back to our old chairman, um, Craig Barrett, who said, you know, success in the end for a modern economy is connecting smart people with smart ideas. And government's role is to help them do that effectively. 
So to be successful in the 21st century, you need to have an educated population. You need to encourage entrepreneurship. You need to encourage um, innovation. And you need to have an infrastructure that it allows people to do this from where they are. And we're still challenged in some of these areas. We still don't have a single digital economy that allows us to operate across Europe. We have to operate in each country separately. Uh, so I think there's still some opportunities. But on the positive side, Intel has established 21 different laboratories over the last three years. Those laboratories employed 900 researchers doing absolutely groundbreaking work. Uh, just in the last few weeks, we established a laboratory in Belgium, in IMIC, which is doing work on exascale computing, which is thousands of times more powerful than the world's most powerful supercomputer today. So we think the brains are here. What we need to do is free them up and work with them to create the next generation of designs. So the right conditions need to be created for the potential to be released. Gordon Gwedish, Intel, thank you very much. Thank you very much.